I have to take an exam at 11.20 and then after that, we're gonna jump straight into the Christmas decorating. Um, I'm gonna pull out my mini tree and I have little Christmas tree decorations that I made last year. I have to go through a few of my notes in preparation for the exam and I'm scrapping it all once I'm done because that'll be my last licensing exam, I think, I hope. I haven't done math or science since high school, but I actually did really well on this exam, surprisingly. I really feel like I'm getting closer to my goal, one step at a time, and the Lord is sovereignly guiding my path, opening and closing doors according to His perfect will. I'm gonna take these pumpkins away now. Look at this little tree I made last year. I'll have to make it again. I've been loving this song by City of Light called Your Will Be Done and the lyrics, which are based on the Lord's Prayer, have been my constant prayer as well. It goes, Your will be done, my God and Father, as in heaven, so on earth. My heart is drawn to self-exalting. Help me seek your kingdom first. I don't think the world could possibly wrap its head around why we would ever live for anyone other than ourselves. But we who have tasted and seen that the Lord is good know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I can't imagine living for any other reason than for His glory. Everything apart from Him is worthless and vain. I made myself a cup of coffee, drink some milk. Now time to sit by the tree, maybe watch a movie, but... Literally, the side is completely bare. Do you guys do that too? It's like you only decorate the front of it, right? It's really full and beautiful. And then the side is just sad and empty. <laughs> so I'm writing some letters to my friends while watching Pastor Mike Winger by the lit Christmas tree. I am dead at how this side is completely empty. Do you see the split down the middle? I'm dying. I love the way the tree looks at night. It's just so magical. Anyways, I went to church the next day and helped out with the children's ministry. They were customizing their ornaments to hang on the Christmas tree. So cute. French onion soup. For the longest time, my favorite thing to get at Panera was the French onion soup. And I remember they discontinued it once and I was so angry. <laughs> or not angry, I was just really sad because that's the only thing I enjoyed there. And I was gonna even write an email to Panera to complain about them. But they brought it back shortly afterwards, before I even sent the email. I, I had it once in Paris and it wasn't as good as the one from Panera. I heard that French people don't actually eat French onion soup, which probably explains why the Parisian one wasn't as good as the American Panera chain restaurant one, but I want to get into cooking a bit more because I'm more into baking than I am cooking. While the onions cooked, I continued reading from Dr. James White's book, Is the Mormon My Brother? I've been greatly blessed by Dr. White's ministry, and I've learned so much from his work, especially on Mormonism. So the soup is coming together. I just ran to Publix and got this baguette. Let's put this together. I prepared a bowl of the French onion soup with bread and cheese for my younger brother to try. Let's try it. You're supposed to fill it all the way to the top and then... I know, but you might not like it, so I just... Do I have to try while you're recording? I just... Okay, you don't have to. I'm gonna be working on an infographic for my Instagram about, of course, Mormonism, because I love the LDS so much. 
you guys don't understand i'm not even being sarcastic i genuinely have such a heavy burden on my heart for the mormons because they are such wholesome and outstanding people but they have a jesus that cannot save and there's nothing that makes me more angry at joseph smith than the fact that he has led millions of just good people like obviously all have fallen short of the glory of god so there's no one who's really good but the mormons are such family oriented and lovely people but they're being led astray by a con man who claimed that god spoke to him and whatnot and it just makes me so angry so that is why i dedicate so much of my energy to refuting mormonism because i love you guys and i want you to know the truth i mean it from the bottom of my heart i am motivated by the utmost love and concern for the lds i'm making earl grey chocolate chip cookies from a recipe i found on pinterest um yeah i'm just using this tea bag the tea leaves in the tea bag and it smells really good I enjoyed my tea and cookies while flipping through this Christmas edition of the Country Living magazine. Our church decided to have an outdoor service one Sunday because the weather was finally getting cooler here in South Florida. <laughs> In the past, I was obsessed with finding the perfect gifts for my friends and family and completing all of the Christmas traditions before the month ends. But this year, I found that I haven't been so much focused on all of the festivities, but rather just on the Lord. I've been so consumed by wanting to know Him more and just trying to tell others about His grace and love that I've forgotten just how close it is to Christmas Day already. But I think it's better this way. Let's not just celebrate our gracious Savior on Christmas, but every day, all day, every breath that we take. I'm truly grateful to be known and loved by Him, and may all my days bring glory to His name. I hope all of you have a most wonderful Christmas and an even greater New Year. See you in 2023. Sincerely, Hannah.